Uh, thanks a lot, Chris. Well, this morning we are learning about the new efforts first responders are taking to battle the blaze here in the Panhandle. Yeah, they are battling multiple wildfires here in the Panhandle. News 13's Tess Rowland joins us live now from the Panama City Mall, which is serving as the command center. Good morning, Tess. Good morning, Chris and Aaron. This is day five for crews responding to the Chipola complex fires and some bright light yesterday. Those that were evacuated due to the Atkins Avenue fire were actually able to return home safely. But the fire that crews are most concerned about are, is actually the Bertha Swamp Road fire, which we're looking at right here, which has encompassed the three counties. And as Chief Brad Monroe was telling me, we are not out of the woods yet in terms of fires, despite that bright light of news. And I'm joined with him live this morning. So do tell me, Brad, why is this fire the most difficult for you guys to maintain at this time? Well, the, the location of the fire is in some uh, swampy areas. It's mixed with uh, high ridges and swamp. It makes it difficult for the, the Florida Forestry Service to uh, address this fire. And so they've got a lot of equipment in there. They have to look for opportunities, the high ridges and stuff like that uh, to actually work on the fire. It's very difficult. The air assets have helped quite a bit. I'm concerned about as it moves into the Calhoun County area, uh, it, it may soon affect some residences up in there. And so those folks need to keep a close eye on this thing today. Over in Youngstown, uh, we're looking at uh, that that area, may, mainly the Bear Creek area today, and uh, hopefully we don't have to get any do any evacuations there. But we were pleased to be able to bring some folks back on the Atkins side, and hopefully we can talk about that in a few minutes. But, but this is a huge fire, and this fire can spot over depending upon the wind. Mm -hmm. It can go this way or that way, or even further north. And so folks just need to keep an eye on things as this front approaches. We don't know exactly what's going to happen. So for those at Bear Creek, they cannot return home at this time due to this fire? Well, we haven't released uh, any evacuation areas except the Atkins area there. Okay. And so for right now, until we see what the weather does today, right now we have a south wind. Uh, as the front approaches, that may change. So we just got to keep an eye on things. We, uh, the humidity got uh, up to 100% last night, which helps. Okay. Uh, but just remember, folks, we're... Um, we're in a, in a drought. We're in a, a mm -hmm. tremendous drought. We have a lot of fuel on the ground. Uh, we said this uh, throughout since Hurricane Michael that we may be facing something like this, and this is the perfect condition for that. Dry uh, weather with low humidity and a lot of um, fuel on the ground, and it, it makes a perfect um, a atmosphere for things to, to burn. So depending upon the wind, it can spread any way, and it also creeps from one side to the other. This is a huge fire. It creates its own weather system. It has lightning wow. in it during the day. So it's, it's, a, it's amazing, um, a, a part of nature, but it's a very dangerous situation. Well, thank you so much, Chief Monroe. I appreciate your time this morning. And of course, all your efforts in fighting this fire, you heard him here. Humidity is our friend in this case, but there is still burn ban in place. So do be cautious, even with grilling and items like that. We'll have a lot more from Chief Monroe later this morning, but reporting live for you in Panama City, Tess Rowland, News 13, Panhandle Strong.